No one's ever seen it happen. It's a belief just like Christianity. It's a religion. So, if we can't teach Christianity in schools, in public schools, then we can't teach math revolution in public schools. What's that? Yeah, sure can. Sure can. But the point is this. We shouldn't be supporting math revolution by our, our tax dollars, and we definitely shouldn't be teaching in public schools, and we definitely shouldn't be teaching that as fact. Which a lot of people are teaching as fact. I'm sure it's a professional in this university who are teaching math revolution as fact. They may say to you, if you're a Christian, get out of my classroom. <laughs> I've heard many people say that. Okay, it's about the only university I've been to. Christians, go to, go to science class or history class. If you're a Christian, get out of my class because we believe in evolution here. Okay? But evolution is a lie. It's not fact. It's not even worthy to become a theory. We've never observed it. We've never tested it. We've never reproduced it. It's not science. It's faith. Okay? And uh, the great murderer, Adolf Hitler, once said this. If you tell a lie long enough, tell a lie often enough, tell a lie loud enough, people believe it. Not just that, but evolution. People all believe it because they've been told it over and over again in their head. Uh, the world is 4.6 billion years old. We went from primordial ooze to what we are today through chance. Through chance. That's a lie, friends. God created the world. He created the heavens and the earth. It's seven days, six days, rest on the seventh day, and the world's about 6,000 years old. And there's nothing on earth, no evidence, no proof, that goes against those facts. Okay, so God is God. He's revealed to us in His Word what He has done, and we're to believe it. In fact, the Bible says this, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But many people walk the other way around and say, well, give me some wisdom, Give me some proof, and then I'll fear God. No, friends, you come to the knowledge of the truth by fearing God. In fact, I presuppose God exists because if you don't, you can't make sense of the world around you. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, think about it. Why do we have why do we have morals? Why do we believe that rape's wrong, that uh, murder's wrong, and that child abuse are wrong? We believe those things are wrong. Because God made us to moral beings, and therefore we're moral just like Him, we're created in His image. Okay? Now, if evolution is true, we have no reason to have morals. We're just higher forms of animals. We can do whatever we want. We can kill like the lion kills the gazelle and not get in trouble for it. I mean, you never see a, a courtroom setting where there's a giraffe, a judge, and he's ruling over the lion who killed the gazelle and says, Now, Mr. Lion, you shouldn't be killing the gazelle now. You're in big trouble today. That's murder. You don't see animals do that. But yet we, we're just higher forms of animals according to evolution. Uh, we have courtrooms. We have jail cells. We exercise morality because God exists. And God made the moral beings. And uh, we're made as image. We have most people who are evolutionists or atheists or agnostics. They're stealing from my worldview, a Christian worldview, to make sense to the world around them. They're not being true to their own worldview. If they were, they could do whatever they wanted to. They'd say murder's okay. They'd say rape's okay. Yeah, it is. Tell me how it's separate from God. Where do you get your morality from? Because if God doesn't exist, there'd still be wrong to kill people. Why would that be wrong? Because people are logical beings. Where do you get your logic from? You get logic from evolution. Really? Yeah, really. So logic... This evolved over years. How do you know your logic is logical? Hold on a second, let me answer make it in real quick. How do you know your logic is logical? I know my logic is more logical than believe the world fucking created by like. How do you know that? Because. Because what? You have this written in a book that's so. Wrong. Wrong. That's not why I believe it. God exists, I mean. Let me ask you this, sir. If we're just a random human beings that came about by chance over billions of years, how do you know your logic is logical? How do you know your logic is not illogical? You have no standard judgment against. Yeah, but it's the best thing that we have as of the day. I mean, Says who? Compared to the rest of the universe, maybe we're stupid, but it's the smartest, I mean, it's the best thing that we have. Okay, let me ask you a question. Is logic something you can touch? No, it's something you feel. Okay, no, no, I'm talking to him right now. Is logic something you can touch? Yeah. Is something you can taste? Something you can smell. Something you can smell. Sometimes you can smell. 
No, you can't smell logic. No, it's, something, you can. it's something you can, uh, you can hear. No, logic is immaterial. Okay? It's something that's in your brain. Okay? But yet you believe it. You can't see it, you can't touch it, you can't taste it, you can't hear it, you can't smell it, but you believe in it. Okay? And I say, from my worldview, that you're logical because God's logical when he made you in his image. Now, from your point of view, uh, why don't animals deal with math and uh, all the other things? Why don't they have why don't they have courtroom systems? Why don't they believe in things we believe? We're just higher forms of animals. They didn't evolve. They didn't evolve. But we're just animals. What does that mean? The morality is an evolution thing? You see what I'm saying here is that you have no reason, for, if you're an atheist, you're an agnostic, or humanistic, from your worldview, you have no reason to believe in morality. If you're true to your worldview, you have no reason to believe in logic. You have no reason to believe in reason. You have no reason to believe in God either. You're right, from your worldview, you don't. But I'm telling you, if you're going to make sense that there's logic in the universe, there's reason in the universe, that we have morality, the uniformity in nature, the laws of science, if you're going to make sense of any of that stuff, you have to presuppose God. No, you yes, you do. What's that? What's your reason for believing God? It's all going to make sense. It's all going to make sense, man. You can't make sense of... I mean, do you believe child abuse is wrong? Yes. Do you believe rape's wrong? Yes. Do you believe murder's wrong? Yes. Why do you believe they're wrong? So what if you go to a place where it's not a law of land? Is it all of a sudden not wrong now? If it's not the law of the land, then that land is not wrong in that way. It but it's... Wrong in all no, 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 no. no. We're talking about absolutes here. We're talking about absolutes. Is murder absolutely wrong no matter what? No. It's not. Is rape absolutely wrong no matter what? According to your God, it isn't. I'm asking you. Is rape absolutely wrong no matter what? In our eyes, it is. Okay. Is <laughs> child abuse... Absolutely wrong, no matter what. In our eyes, yes. Okay, so if you go somewhere and someone says child abuse is right, and the majority said it's right, does it become right then? Are you from there? I'm Are asking you, you a question. Because we're dealing with morals here. We're getting to the foundation of your thinking. If you believe that child abuse is absolutely wrong, and you believe murder is absolutely wrong, and you believe that rape is absolutely wrong, why do you believe it's wrong? Why? So who says pain is wrong? Uh, I do. If you hurt me, but, it hurts. Why is that wrong? Why is that wrong? you attack me, then it hurts inside and I don't like it. Therefore, I come back and say, oh, well, I but, but, but the rape is, but the rape is you're hurting inside because he loves to rape. <coughs> so is his rights matter? Okay, yeah, but that's illogical. That's illogical. Huh? What about, the, what about Adolf Hitler? He loved to murder Jews. And when you took away his, his free will to murder Jews, uh, you're taking away his happiness. You're giving him pain. So your idea of pain being the foundation of morality is not, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. So morality must start with a standard. Okay? And for you to say something's right and something else is wrong means you have a standard to judge, well, this is right, this is wrong, by that standard. And if you have a standard, really? So if a rapist feels something's rape is right, it's right. Rapist is illogical. But he just said that if I feel something's right, it's right. Yeah, but well, if rape you're, is if wrong you're and I don't have a prior right. judgment to make Yes. Wrong, you just hit the nail on the head right there, sir. You said if you feel rape is right, you're wrong. And that's my point. But you have nothing to judge that by. How can you tell a rapist he's wrong for feeling it's right? Because he's irrational. I didn't know he's irrational. I know you're not irrational. How do you know that? Maybe the rapist is the way he's supposed to be. Maybe it's not. See, that's my point. You have nothing to judge. When you say something's right and something's wrong, you're taking a standard and judging right or wrong. And if there's a standard, there must be a standard maker. That's God. God gave us his law. He said rape's wrong. That's why you feel rape is wrong, because God wrote it upon your heart. God made you a moral being. Okay, so you know rape's wrong. You know murder's wrong, you know child abuse is wrong, because God told you it's wrong. It's written upon your hearts, the Bible says. And for you to believe in morals, many other starting points, 